generic greetings and welcome to XCOM Chimera Squad today's beverages. A nice cup of Earl Grey, freshly opened as well, so it is indeed quite strong. Anyway, I digress. XCOM Chimera Squad is an offshoot from the main XCOM series of games, so it shares a lot of that DNA. It's essentially a turn-based tactics game where we have a crack elite unit, and they'll go into places to complete various objectives using skills, abilities, and varying caliber weapons. And in this particular case, it's a lot more smaller scale than the sort of main body of the XCOM game. So instead of defending against a planetary invasion, we are investigating and helping out in this city here, which I believe is City 31 or something like that. It is quite a story-driven game and there's a lot of factions to investigate and things like that to discover. So I don't want to try and I want to try and avoid all spoilers if possible, but there will be some as we progress on through the video. Either way, I've played the game for about 10 or 11 hours now and that's hopefully enough to get most of it down and obviously show you a bit of the game. Now, if you've played XCOM previously, then you'll probably get what this game is about, but it does differ in a couple of ways. Now, I must confess, I've never been big into XCOM. I played the first one when it came out. I said the first one. Uh, I'm talking about the remake, the 2012, I think it is, by Fraxis. Anyway, I quite enjoyed that, but never completed it. Never played the expansions, never played the second. So you can imagine me coming into this and seeing, well, for example, snake creatures, uh, thinking, what on earth's gone on here? And I had to have a friend explain it, and even that was a bit dodgy. But uh, fear not, you can press escape, and there is a XCOM handbook there, so that can help out. But we don't really need to be concerned with that at this stage. This is our main main hub we've been tasked with setting up this offshoot where we are helping out this city and this is the whole management side of it where you've got research and building and training and that sort of thing i'll show you that later on but i think instead what we'll do is look at the main body of the game where the rubber meets the road the meat and potatoes of the game which is the combat and then if you don't like that well then basically you know the management side ain't gonna save it so let's just go over to say this mission here in downtown so the mission is growth industry so, growth industry. Difficulty? Very difficult. Hostiles captured a scientist working on one of City 31's vertical farms. XCOM HQ lists this as a priority recovery. So, our rewards are one plated vest, which is an armor modification, and 30 intel. We have a dark event, which is mind armor. Progen units have increased armor. Not good. Anyway, we'll go to send um, the APC because we don't have any flyers. Uh, we have four characters here and there's, I think there's probably about 10 to 15 in the game. I don't have them all unlocked, but they all have different skills and abilities and you equip them and you level them up. And I'll, again, I'll show you that side of it later on. But at the moment, all you need to know is that we have Terminal, our healer, Godmother, who is the leader and the person with the biggest shotgun, Cherub, who has got like a defense shield and this little pistol here, and then Verge, who is a alien wizard by the look of it. And they also have a really cool weapon because I nicked it off a corpse. And then we have Witch, which is a robot in case of any of these guys fall. So Operation Desperate Rendezvous or rendezvous. Uh, so objective is growth industry in downtown. Difficulty very difficult. Projected breach options. Window, door, vehicle, keypad, and then another door. Or keypad door, rather. <laughs> um, projected encounters too, but this can go up if there's any special events. And then we've already got the dark events of project units have increased armor. Anyway, we'll click launch and crack on into it. So we'll get in the APC, drive it like we stole it, and then just pretty much rally it out of the, uh, the, <laughs> out of the gate here. So we have two main phases when we come into the combat. We have the breach phase and then we have our combat phase so the breach phase is the first bit so you can see we'll be pulling up in our not so inconspicuous vehicle there very subtle and then we'll uh, pick our entry points now at this particular case uh, on this stage here we're probably yeah we only have the one so we're getting out the vehicle and attacking but sometimes you could be swinging through windows you can be opening doors you can be indoors there's lots of varied terrain and levels and that sort of thing anyway we can see we have options for our breaching up here. We only have one because it's vehicle, so it is uh, fairly good. So we have ready for anything. All units through this entrance get plus 50 dodge for a one round. So we need to select our characters and put them in the order. And this will be their sort of initiative order from leaving and doing their thing. So we'll have Cherub because he's got a shield. We will have probably, I would say, Terminal, which we could use things like a hollow scanner. So instead of firing on our breach, we can get an aim bonus. I think we would... Oh, it's only one use permission, though. I think because of the because of the size of this because I think what we'll be doing is clearing this atrium out and then going into into one of these warehouses. I think having aim here might be good because it's probably quite a long range fight this one. So we'll go with the hollow scanner because why not? We'll then pick probably Verge and then we'll pick Godmother. And that'll be our order. So we'll click breach and that is the breach. So we'll fling our sort of scan grenade there and there it goes. So we get our aim bonus and then we jump over and we get this sort of bullet time thing which reminds me very much of like a bit of a scene from uh, Dread, the film... Um, 
Dread with Carl Urban, where it's all like slow mo and stuff. Anyway, so we get essentially a free action of doing something. So a lot of the time, it's either shooting, rush to cover, or a special ability. So we can tab between the different targets and fire if you want to. I'm going to fire at that guy there, and you can already see that we've already got a bit of a problem that the camera is a little problematic at times. Anyway, we'll fire at that fellow there, and there you go. So they're taking some damage, and they are also they've also got armor. So let's see if we can hit this guy. Yeah. So there's three damage, one armor, and we. Have one shot remaining with Godmother here, and she's got a massive shotgun. So I'm trying to see. I think I'm going to risk it to shoot the acolyte there because we might kill him if we hit. 75% chance to hit. Sadly, we didn't, but we also caused two damage because of a mod on the weapon. If she misses, she will cause some damage. So. Let's just see what we've got. Quick rundown of the UI. Top left are our objectives. So this is encounter one of two. We need to uh, clear the freight yard of all of these enemies, locate the scientist, and there's also a secondary objective, which is to go down, let me rotate the camera with Q&A, &E, uh, to get this thing here within three turns. If we clear the map, though, we will get that automatically, so that's fine. Bottom left shows you our character, which we got selected, and also their ammo. All the abilities and equipment that they've got that we can use are on the bottom. And then one of the most important, in fact, I would say it's the most important, is the timeline. So it will go down from top to bottom, go at the end phase, and then cycle. Now, you can alter this timeline with different abilities, and also if you take a character out, then they'll drop out of sequence as well. But we have to focus on Chero because that's their turn. We have two action points available. Some actions will end your turn automatically. So, for example, firing will end your turn if you fire. So even if we only have, say, one action point, if so we've got two action points remaining and fire, it will stop it so you have to remember out the sequence but I'm looking around I can see there's a trooper over there there's the whatever that is there and some people up the top now we know that this acolyte here is going to go it's going to go after Cherub, so I'm going to try and take them out of the picture. But first thing I'm going to do is use Kinetic Shield, and I'm going to put Kinetic Shield on probably myself, actually. The Kinetic Shield will essentially absorb any hit that I uh, get attacked with. So it could be one damage, it could be a million. It doesn't matter, it just absorbs it. And then, every time the shield is lost, he charges his Riot Shield type thing up, which means he hits harder. So that's a bit of synergy there. Let's go to Fire Weapon, and I can see that it's a 97% chance to hit, and all of the calculations on the bottom there. I'm going to take that shot and there we go. Critical and then they get shot and fall off the top there. And that means they've dropped out of sequence and they're gone. So we're getting a psionic bomb getting launched from whatever this thing is. As I said, I don't play the XCOM game so there's a lot of stuff I'm going, I have no idea what that thing is. But we can see that it's come around here and it's disabled all the weapons. That's actually extremely problematic now because I'm going to have to start to reload. Anyway, I've got the character here. This is Terminal who is a sort of support and healer type uh, person. We see the trooper over there is next, so ideally I want to be taking them out. So I'm going to run over to perhaps this bit here. So keep it in cover. You've got full and half cover. This is only half cover from that direction and I think full cover gives you an extra armor point. This is the health bar here and this is the armor point. So armor just, you reduce Reduce any incoming damage by that amount. I think certain weapons will ignore it and certain abilities like psychic powers and such. Anyway, we're going to go to fire and it's saying they want to target that one there on 72% chance, but we're going to switch over to there. 71% chance, I think it is worth the risk and there's the shot. It has hit them and actually knocked them unconscious. The, no reason, the reason they're unconscious is because I have tranquilizer bullets in that one, so instead of killing them, it knocks them out and the advantage of that is that it makes them... Um, it, it makes them capturable and then we can essentially, there's no like interrogation thing, but you just get intel off them. So, you know, you want to try and do that. In fact, I would say one of the one of the things you should do very early on is get those tranquilizers on all of your guys because it just will help you out massively. Anyway, we have our verge here and we want to start to do use some of their abilities. I don't want to stand around here because, quite frankly, standing around there looks a bit painful. So instead, I'm going to go over to here. Actually, do you want to get in cover? I'll get in cover a little bit at the front here. Moving. And I have Good some move. abilities. I can't fire because we have no weapon, uh, no bullets in our gun, so instead I'm going to use, and I would do this anyway, Battle Madness, which we can target an enemy and they will go for us. They'll take their turn. I'm going to target Codex. No, that's 92% chance to work. We'll target the... Br Ooh, I don't know. We'll target Codex because it's a very low chance of it failing and hopefully they will then attack 
and that's gone berserk. Yeah, that's fine. So that hopefully they will attack the brute and kill it. And that's exactly what they're doing. And that's exactly what's happened. They've killed it for us. So they've taken that out for us. So looks like the bruise is firing. It's going to hit our kinetic shield. So that's fine. It'll break the shield, which means they take no damage. And then we'll gain a charge and they'll start powering themselves up. So they, they will get basically more damage as they do that. I'm going to run over to here because you can see there's a sort of guy cowering down. That's a civilian and that's sort of a sort of a bonus thing. If you get the civilians out you gain extra points. So I've moved them there and then I'm going to go to reload weapon because quite frankly the person with the big shotgun really wants some ammo and there we go. And then it's over to this character at the back and it's a sorceress so they're going to do a teleport and then they're probably going to do tyranny. Oh, I'm not too sure what that is but it doesn't sound good and they're going over there and firing again. Hit Cherub for critical so two arm resorb summit and then there we go. Anyway. So we're back to normal. We're going to go to Kinetic Shield and put it once again on them because we have to get forward. And I will run over to... I'm tempted to run straight ahead, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to get into cover Found around here. And there we go. So over to this character. They were berserk. Oh, there's the grenade going off. We can't see it because of the camera, which is, I think, one of the main problems with the game. The camera can be an issue at times um, anyway you can see they're teleporting over there and I don't know what they're going to do now but I hope it's not one of them bombs again I'm assuming that they oh they've just gone on overwatch okay I was assuming that we can't do the bomb again because a lot of these abilities do have cooldowns I'm going to use a safeguard which sends the drone over to a character like so and then it'll heal them up so I'll heal them for four and also give them some extra defense as well. We've got one more action available, and I mean, I could do Overwatch, you can do Preparation, which gives you extra defense and dodge. I can reload. I think actually just fire weapon is probably the way forward, and fire at that bruiser. Yeah, that's pretty good. 84% chance. So we'll fire away there. Three damage in one armor. Not great, no not terrible. And now we'll do Battle Madness. I pretty much use this all the time if possible, because not only does it you know stop that character <laughs> there we go not only gives them more options but also do, you know it allows them just to uh, start messing around with others and I just think it's really powerful as you can see they've fired they've taken some damage off that one and uh, they're pretty much not too happy about that what you can also see is these streams going from the character this is like a neural link type stuff and if we have uh, things connected to the neural link we can do mind flare and that will do damage to these characters that we uh, focus on but instead what I'll do is I think I'll reload my gun because well we might Weapon as well ready. Back over to Godmother here, and this is where things are going to go not too good for uh, this character here. And we've got a ventilate ability. It is, what's the cooldown on it? Three ammo and three turn cooldown. But the advantage is that it does a lot of damage. What I want to do, though, is get into a better position. So I'm going to get up to this position here. And, oh, actually, I forgot that they're actually, yeah, this is bad. I messed that up completely. I forgot that they were in Overwatch because I couldn't see the... There was no line there, but I've been hit there, so that is my mistake. But we will do ventilate, and we'll see if we can hit them. Well, it's 100% chance to hit, so we'll hit. It says it's going to kill them, but in my experience, it probably won't. It'll probably leave them on one health or even less. There we go. There's the damage they've taken, and they do this clone thing. I don't know what they're all about, and we can't see because the camera don't spin. But anyway, back to the sorcerer, and they're going to move over to the right. And what are they going to do? A neural lance. That doesn't sound good. And, ooh, that's zapped, and it's... Good grief. It's hit... It hit... I think these two characters. I think it did a big line. It's... Uh, it's... Has it killed that character? Yes, it killed one of their own characters. But it's um, also hit Cherub, took the shield off, and then hit Verge at the back there. Anyway, once again, we are going to put our shield on. I'm going to put it on myself. We have one more round in order to get this thing back here. And it is possible for us to get... I'm not going to... I'm not going to focus on it entirely, but I'm going to go to Charged Bash, and we're going to charge and then take this out. So the way this works is you can select where you want to be, but you can see there's like a blue cone going around. That's because where we hit, it will do like a sort of bash around that, so anything behind will take damage. There's that Codex dead, and it is now dropped. That's good. And charge depleted because I've used it, and oh, it looks like that other Codex is coming along, and it's going to fire at Cherub probably again. No, no, it's firing at Godmother. There you go. So arm has reduc uh, reduced that, which is pretty good. I'm going to use the Safeguard ability on Terminal and heal up Godmother because, well, she's taking a bit of damage there. And I'm just trying to see. We should be able to get to that location around the corner with the rest of them. In fact, what I'm going to do is go to... Uh, I'm going to use Cooperation on Godmother here, which gives them an immediate action. 
and I'll use that action to sprint over to this location because you can see we've got terminal to finish off that'll be done then it'll go to virgin then it'll go down to godmother so we can use what abilities can we use well we've got the sorcerer over there that's out of the way this one's only got two health so what I'll do is probably go to fire weapon and fire at the sorcerer 100% chance to hit because we've got some nice elevation and good grief it went straight through there and took the window out I do like all of the effects of the things getting smashed and all of the damage on the terrain, I find that quite nice. Anyway, we now go over to Godmother, and we pretty much have only... We don't have only one option, but I certainly want to go around here. I then can open that up. It is a free action to do that, so we open the chest, and we will get that evidence. So that's our sort of secondary bonus one done. And then we'll go to Fire Weapon, and then good night, see you later. They disappear. Cool. <laughs> Literally, they disappear. There's only like a mass left. So the software is going to teleport up the top there because obviously that's the height of <laughs> that's the height of defensive positions oh, right yeah, up top in out. the open where, yeah, <laughs> up the top there. Let's use our kinetic shield and put it on Godmother. And this is where we have to box a bit clever now because if I just charge in and kill there. them, then we won't have time to heal. So what I want to do is uh, at least wait on to these, this person here. So we've got damage on Godmother, damage on Burge. So I'm going to say safeguard and we'll put it on probably probably this guy because Godmother's already got a shield around us. So I'm just trying to heal up for the next one because this is only the first of two encounters. So there we go. That's that healed up. I could use second wind, but you can only use it once per mission and instead I will simply head over here because I'll that run. obviously wizard can teleport and that sorcerer rather so I want to make sure they are not they're not uh, going elsewhere I think what I'll do is go over there so we'll jump over the barrels up this ladder and he's quite nimble and then we'll go out here so now we have the option to shoot with godmother I think we'll take the shot it's 93 see chance dead so that's just fine and there you go it says unconscious but quite frankly they've just landed face first off a what looks to be like a 14 foot container so they are pretty much crippled if not dead it's like the batman thing isn't it i don't kill people i just punch people's faces through a brick wall mm, yeah the gravity killed him did he batman anyway so this is where we get a different choice now where we can breach in the side door keypad door or the side window so you see the difficulty and the amount of like threats that we're going to have helping hand Last unit through the entrance will receive an extra action point. Cool. Ready for anything. Units through this entrance get plus 50 dodge for one round. And units here gain extra aim in the breach. So what I'll do is from this side, I will send in probably terminal. Because we want extra aim. She's more long range than the other ones. From this entrance at this side, the, the last unit through the entrance will receive an action point. I'll put that on probably Cherub because they're going to be the first and last. And then through the main door, we'll have um, Godmother and... Verge, although I think Verge will use ah, this is a problem actually because we got some damage spread up. He's damaged, but Godmother isn't. And if we had them over here, hang on, if we had remove those and put them there, Terminal can use the Gremlin, heals two, and we can't use the Hollow Scanner though because we've used the Charger. I'll tell you what, I will stick them in that side. I mean, is there any point in putting them there? It'll heal two, but we're already healing full with with them. So I think yeah, we'll stick with. We'll stick with that one. So remove terminal, put terminal on that side like so, and that should be the job done. I'm gonna actually put Virgin, then Godmother. Oh no, no, sorry, we have to we have to do it the other way around because uh, the first person in has to just use has to open the door. So we'll use the medi patch, and that should be it. Let's go for a breach. Stay behind me. So ready to breach. It's go time. And the best way to go through a window, I find, is via your face. And there's the healing that you can't really see because of the camera. And then the door opens and we charge in. And then it'll be back to open that door and combat. So hello there. That is a bomber. Now I will... I can if I want to use fa uh, phalanx, which means that the aggressive guy that's firing will attack me. And I think actually that's exactly what I'll do. So aggressive means that they'll get to shoot back after this one. But... We need to take these guys out. I'm going to use Alpha Strike, which gives us... It's an attack, but it also gives us an extra um, boost on the first turn. So they're unconscious. Apparently that's unconscious. And then we've got one in there. Now, I could use Levitation, which lifts them right up. But quite frankly, I'd rather just do that and cause a lot of damage to them. And then, finally, they're attacking the Archon. Now, I could... I don't know. There's probably a lot of different schools of thought where you either take everything, take everything down if you can... 
or put a lot of damage out. I would rather kill the aggressive enemy like so, or rather make them unconscious. And there's the fire back and we are immune because we use that ability to defend. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the thought that anything aggressive we should take out as fast as possible. So the alerts get their little action and anything surprise doesn't. So there's our turn Spy order. The and there's a VIP. So we're charging up because well, that's exactly what we do when we take that damage. And we will go to a kinetic shield on myself. There we go. And I also have an ability called team up. Every every person has this ability. but you can And it doesn't cost an action point to use, but you can only use it once. So I'm going to say team up on... Verge, and that should give them an extra turn, well basically move them up on the timeline and then we'll go to attack and what I want to do is head that way because you can see it's actually going to hit two of them and I just realised, this like, is this like an Iron Man suit making thing? <laughs> There's loads of uh, red armour, red and silver armour. Wow, so unconscious and then the bomber is almost dead and there's the charge because, well, we've just got different skills that give us the charge and I think one of them is, I think one of those skills is... Um, if you kill someone, knock them out. We'll do bat Battle Madness on the Archon. Enemy is all around you. They are next anyway, so I'll do that. And if they use one of their, one of their like abilities that has a cooldown, then hopefully we'll take that out of the out of the sequence. If nothing else, they're going to shoot the brute, and that's a lot of damage. And what shall I do now? I'm going to use Banish. Now, see this weapon here looks a bit strange this is actually a legendary weapon and it has a banish ability so it's fire at the target until it run out of ammo until it runs out of ammo or the target dies so we're going to do the archon it says it's only going to do four damage but we're going to actually fire three times i think three or four times even so first shot missed uh second shot hit not not very good damage though third shot missed again unlucky Unlucky. And fourth shot. Hit again, but again, not much damage. So, wasn't great. Wasn't great, but at least it's good. There's a bit of damage out on health out there. So, they're going to do nothing by the look of it. It said Battle Frenzy, so I'll take that. I will use our... Ooh, what do I want to use? I will fling a plasma grenade, and I will, because this is a free action to do so, I lob it over there. Now it's going to destroy a fair bit of terrain, but the main thing is it's going to take out that bomber because those fling grenades themselves, and I'd rather that guy not be here. But sadly, it didn't work out. It only caused one damage, uh, but it did shred one of their armor. So I guess another option would be to run down here and then fire. The problem with that is. Well, what's the sequence? The Archon's next, and then it's the Bruiser, and then it's the Brute, and the Bomber's last, but we should be able to get Terminal to do that. So getting the Archon removed would be good. Getting... Well, if we go to Ventilate, we could Ventilate this guy back here, the Bruiser. I don't think he'll die, but I'm going to try it, because this is going to be a lot of damage, and obviously it's all about damage economy. Ah, so it has caused five damage on him and removed his cover. So the Archon is surging forward by a couple of squares, and it's going to use... Oh, I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's uh, this fire thing it does. Uh, they've run up to me, the bruiser here, and hit my kinetic shield, which has removed that. And then we get an extra charge, which is really bad for them, because when we hit them back, assuming they don't move, we should be able to get them all. Looks like, oh, good grief. So this thing's come forward and absolutely belted Verge there. However, this guy is right next to us, so we can use our safeguard to heal them up, because why would we not? And there we go, there's that sorted. And then it's the bomber that's next. Now, can we target the bomber? I don't think we can. No, we can't target the bomber. However, we can just go to subdue. Ah, sub sadly, subdue will not take out the brute, but we'll go for 96% chance. It'll still be subdued anyway, because we still got them tracer bullets. And over to the bomber now. And here's the grenade coming out, and this is going to hurt, and it looks like it'll be a plasma, so that's going to set up the... Well, that's, oh, alright, we actually got a turn. Yes, yeah, so we got a bit, we got a delayed plasma bomb, so that's okay, so we can move out the way. I was going to say, if that went off, that would be bad, because you can see it's around this barrel as well, which can blow up. Anyway, we will put um, a kinetic shield on of him. No, Not that I don't think it really matters, because these guys are going to be dead any second now, because if we bash in that direction, we'll get both of them. And see you later, both years, and there you go, unconscious. <laughs> both of them, so we get a charge. So we'll power them right up to gain those extra hits. And it's pretty much game over now. So what I want to do, I, I still don't want to be near that grenade. So I'm still going to move. Um, 
Now we don't have any characters that could shift that grenade, but I'll just I'll just move over to here, and uh, I don't have any bullets. I'm gonna have to just reload. Okay, so it's gonna be another turn I think, but we'll reload that, and then we will take the shot at the. Oh, we could take the barrel out. No, no, we can't actually see that target. So we're gonna run up to here. Stand next to these strategic place gas canisters, and I'm hoping that this will take them out. It's, it says it can, but I think because it's five to seven damage, they've got one, two, three, four, five. We have to do seven damage in order to kill it. That's not happened, so that's a shame. That grenade's going to go off, and good grief, that was powerful. So the grenade went off, and then the that set off the bomb. And that guy's dead. Um, <laughs> what happened there was Godmother's got an ability that... Hmm, burning, yes. Take damage to start their turn, they're blocking for most of the abilities. Um, well, yeah, what happened is if Godmother's got an ability, if someone gets close, she takes a free shot with a shotgun, so the Archon killed itself. I'm going to run over here because I'm on fire and I just need to get out of that. But if I stand here, we should then secure the Scientist, which is now done. And we now have to evac them, and the evac point is over here, so I'm just going to start running. The problem is that our healer is now in the open, and that's going to cause us a bit of an issue. Now, I'm going to put a shield on them. I don't know if that will stop the angles. damage, but we'll see. And then I'm just going to get our dodge. We don't get any extra XP or anything like that for killing them, I don't think. Or rather, we don't get any bonuses for it. Apart from like score and such, so I'm not gonna like farm anything. So page log no longer disorientated. Yes, that's fine. I will. I'm just gonna keep running. I'm just gonna get all, all of the, the heroes way. out. This like say is not something we're here to fight with. We're just trying to get the to the evac point and then get out. So there we no go. Ammo. Godmother will do the same thing. She's out of ammo anyway. So there you are. And then finally we will say, hmm, do I want to run? I'm going to I'm going to reload the reason being that I'm not too sure what's going to happen with the other character whether these can actually get out whether the terminal can get out so I will do I have an option for just saying call it there I've got evac I'm going to think I'm going to have to evac um yeah in the turn right and then we'll go to them we will get the Scientist out. And then finally, it'll be... Nope, looks like Godwill is still going to have to do it. No, it should be Terminals go. No, it's still saying Godmother. End the turn. Right, so there we go. There's the two new enemies coming in. Kicking open the door. They won't get an attack action. And that's why I didn't want to evac anyone. So, we can see we've got someone dropped here. So, I need to get over there. Looks like I can't. Because I'm because I'm in here, it looks like I don't have an option. The only option I have is to evac. So I have to evac. So sadly, um, yeah, terminal is still down there. So they are gravely wounded. So rating is good. It was a very hard mission, but I messed up that bit at the end there. So from 10 captured enemies, remember we did tranquilize them. That's the term we're using. Uh, we did get 20 intel, and we'll see what that does in a second. So that was one of the missions. That's, you can see, you know, a, a fairly, I think, decent representation of what you do. So we had two two encounters. We had two, two different breaches. As I said previously, you've got multiple places to be, whether it be like warehouses, uh, like places like that. You've got like indoors as well, so you're breaching through walls and like offices environments. You've got multiple layers and levels and that sort of thing. Anyway, so we've got the plated vest armor, 30 intel, evidence collected, 35 valerium, and then 20 intel earned from enemies, so we'll say okay for that one. So, and we can see we now have promotions. So I'm going to go down to this person here and then say promote agent. And we've now gained the supercharge ability. Cherub spends all star charges and increases the primary weapon damage of allies while placing hollow target effects on all enemies. The duration of the effects increases with the charge spent one use permission. Wow, that's really powerful. You can see all the stats on the right hand side as well as what they've done. So 24 missions with 22 kills. If we go to Godmother, it's probably a lot higher than that. So 25 missions with 18 kills. So I wonder who's the highest. Um... Kills 22, kills 6, quite relative new one anyway. See, kills 5, so I do tend to use her as the healer. 
Um, kills 10, technically, although he uses his psychic abilities to make other people kill one another. We've also got uh, Blue Blood here, who's a sort of sharpshooter type fellow. And we've got uh, Patchwork, who I've only taken on a couple of missions, too, in fact. But you can see, already racking up those kills. And there's also other characters as well. And you've got different synergies. So, for example, one of them I've found, there's a couple of good synergies. I use Godmother, who has this ability... Where is it here? No. Close Combat Specialist. Godmother takes reaction shot at enemies that get too close. So com you combine that with either Torque's ability because they have a tongue pull so they can shoot out their tongue and pull an enemy right into them. So I'll put Torque next to Godmother. Tongue pull and bring them in. Godmother will then immediately shoot the person that gets there and then if they're still alive we can then wrap them up and take they cause even more damage which because of the upgrade does uh, 5 damage in total. So with the shotgun and that you've pretty much taken 10 health off almost any enemy unless they're too big to be pulled. Also I can do similar with uh, Shelter here who has the relocate, so you swap yourself with someone else, whether it be friendly or an opponent. Similar thing, put him next to Godmother, transfer them around, or transport Godmother and swap with him after standing next to an enemy. It all works out. So there's lots of synergies there, which I uh, do quite like. Anyway, so we do have uh, Agent Scars here. So because she was taken out, she do ha she does have a Scar, which is hobbled, mobility reduced by three, so she's not going to move. Now, you can get rid of those. You can go over to training here, and training is unlocking potential and doing different things to increase mobility and dodge and HP and that sort of thing but also you can train off the scars so it's like a therapy essentially um, and you will be able to get rid of that negative. You've also got some special ops which gives you some things like resources and such but you can also get like extra field teams, you can get uh, different market value reductions, reduce the city anarchy which is up the top here that will go up based on the overall heat level here of the city you also have the field teams that i mentioned each area can have a field team now the finance security or technology and we want to to be honest with you this is where i think things fall down a little bit because the finance and technology ones are pretty good but I think security is pretty much a must for every single one. It just reduces this heat and makes it not go up as much. And you get intel anywhere, which is fairly cool. And it just means it's a lot easier. So all of these other ones, I'm just replacing with security if I've got the points, which in this case I don't because it requires intel. So yeah, I would say if there's any downside to this, I'd say that, yeah, you have got choice. But... You know, security, I think, is probably the right one. Unless you're really probably doing quite well, in which case you could probably go for the other ones. But I think it just takes some of the edge off there. But at least you can pick whatever one you want there. This is our main mission. Heats up max level. I'm going to use the vigilance ability. And these abilities you get from building the different the different uh, column outposts, the field teams. And there we are. And you've got things like gain extra situation rewards. So these are situations here. We don't actually do anything with them. So, for example, we'll just say... Uh, you can just send the APC and it does it automatically, so it's either intel or money. I'm going to say, uh, do a situation straight away, there you go. It doesn't end the turn, but it does that. And also reduce city anarchy, well, we might as well do that because we have the ability to use. So we're going to send the APC there, and that will end the turn, but it'll also give us that money, so there we are. And now we've got training complete for talk, that's pretty good, so that's okay. And we've also got spec ops complete for the intel there. And we have some idle agents and also some research. So what I'll do first, training, we'll put in terminal. And we will say fitness to remove the agent's hobbled ability. And we'll say begin. And you can see there are now over there. We also want to put into this probably, I think we'll go for talk. We'll put them in there because we have to have, I don't, I don't know if you have to have four members, but we're going to have four members. Assembly is now finished. This is where we build stuff. So I've been building a different set of breach abilities. So a cease uh, ceasefire bomb, smoke bomb, and flash bomb. So I'll have to look. I'll look at those in a moment. We're going to go for weapon optics. We'll begin that. You can see we've got two people sitting working on that as well. So anarchy and rest has been altered. We don't really care. At this stage, we've got ceasefire bomb. So disables hostile weapons at a single breach point can reduce a response of hostile targets. That's pretty good. Flash bomb disorients all them, and then smoke bomb reduces hostile barrage damage. Uh, hmm. At the single breach point. So the cease fire bomb is probably the one I want. And it is the most expensive to be fair. Which is generally a good rule of thumb. You can see we've got all of these different abilities and mods and stuff. Which we can go to any one of these. And we'll say pick. I don't know. Say mm, godmother. And we can see the loadout. So there's the extended shotgun there. We've got a clip to increase the clip size. We've got advanced stock. So the miss shots will do two damage. Extra body armor. Some of these are like basic level so you advance them and everybody gets them but other ones like these you have to put on yourself so like the the 
the primary weapon and the armor, you, they just get the highest level that you've researched and bought. Whereas the extra padding you have to put individually onto them. They've got like keycard items and grenades and that sort of thing. Also, there's the uh, one of the best one of the best things I think to get really early on. Trank rounds. Target would be killed, they rendered unconscious, and you capture them. Just that little extra is uh, pretty good. There's other options as well, like trace rounds, and I think you can get acid rounds and fire ones, and you get more technology as you go through the game and un unlock different. Um, investigations and go through the things there's like three main factions to deal with this is actually the second one so yeah uh, we've also got an idle agent which i will put on a i might as well put them on spec ops oh we've also got a scavenger market available so every week we get the scavenger market once once per week i think it is oh no next market appearance in four days my mistake and um, we can get what's this we've got the callow ember an invasion era shock and design that was discontinued Due to the uniform nature of the advent armaments, this is the only known model. Grants the rapid fire ability and grants the serial ability. I'll check those out later, but sounds pretty good. Either way, uh, we need uh, some spec ops, so we're going to put blue blood on that one, and we'll probably say how much money have we got. We've got good credits. I think we're going to go for, once again, intel, because I'm trying to get these... I'm trying to get these... Um, safe house things uh field teams uh, upgraded and trying to replace them all with security either way that has been a little bit of XCOM chimera squad as i said at the start of the video it's not something i really had any sort of eye on i've, I've never got into the XCOM games i quite enjoyed the first one but never played any more never completed it never did expansions for the second one never bothered so the rng would be really annoying um you know the thing is I'm bl i've been played a lot of blood ball back in the day as well so i'm used to risk mitigation that's that's what the you know that's what it's about but it just used to irk me slightly in the now and again which is why i never truly got into it but i don't know i think my taste might have changed over the years and i'm probably getting into it more now but either way that's because of that i didn't really have any eye on this and what actually happened was i played into the breach because i still play that um which i find this is the it's similar small scale tactics game um and also tactical breach wizards which is a game i uh, showed the sort of early Alfrey test thing of and I think it was because of that uh, that sort of found this and honestly genuinely one of the best if not the best game I've played this year um, it's something I've sunk a lot of time into probably close to 11 or 12 hours now on this and it's just really something I've been very very much enjoying there is some niggles here and there like the camera as I said can be problematic at times there's been some points where the characters have just stopped dead in the animation and it's been like a 15 second delay before it just appears somewhere else um, random things like that uh, like I say I'm not too, I'm not convinced on the viability of some of these other field teams and I certainly think there's some things you should certainly pick that make the game infinitely easier like for example Drank rounds, just, just pretty much a must. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, these are just minor things, really minor things for what is essentially a really fun, interesting, and quite cheap game. It's not a very expensive one at all. Um, hoping to get uh, at least another 10 hours into it. This feels to be about halfway through, but I really don't have any ideas. So this is a preview, not full review. But genuinely, one of my favourite games this year. Hopefully, we'll be playing some more and showing some more. If you would like to see more, then by all means, let me know. Links in the description so you can check it out yourself if you do so desire. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings. Oh, and that's cool.